Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the inaugural edition of the Queer Culture Club hosted by the GLBT Historical Society. My name is Terry Beswick, and I'm the executive director of the Society and your host for this series. So please join us each month online in this short format broadcast as we interview lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer folks on the cutting edge of culture making documenting our widely diverse LGBTQ community histories or creating noteworthy queer culture in the present day, conveying the full richness, richness of the LGBTQ community through their writing, art, performance, and activism. So we look forward to interviewing a wide variety of groovy queer folks doing cool stuff. And tonight, I'm delighted to be joined by a culture maker I have long admired, Mark I. Chester, to discuss and give us a sneak preview of his beautiful new book of photography, Street Sex Photos. Um, Mark, do you want to join us on screen? <laughs> Hi, Terry, and thank you very much for inviting me to uh, be the uh, premier interviewee. Yeah, thanks for being our guinea pig. So let me uh, just introduce you a little bit here and then we'll get into it. So Mark I. Chester is a gay radical sex photographer whose fine art, sexual art, has documented his life in San Francisco South Market since the late 1970s. His work is sexually explicit, politically provocative, socially conscious, and artistically taboo. Now at 70, he remains undeterred and believes with all his heart that the sexual lives of gay men are important and worthy of documentation and study. His work continues to break down barriers between normally exclusive genres of art, including fine art studio portraiture, social documentary work, explicit sexual art, and street photography. His new book, Street Sex Photos, will be officially released in six days on January 20th, and an official book release party will be hosted by the GLBT Historical Society in March. I think it's March 18th. Is that right? I'm pretty yes. sure. Yeah. So, Mark, welcome again to the Queer Culture Club. And congrats on your latest book. I, um, you know, I just want to say I feel really privileged and honored to have had a sneak peek at uh, this wonderful collection of new work. And I'm really proud that the Historical Society was able to play a facilitating role in helping to bring it to uh, fruition. And I want to thank our friend uh, Gail Rubin for uh, helping to uh, make that happen. So um, um, let me just interrupt for a minute and okay. uh, say that I've had a collection at the uh, Historical Society for uh, a long time now. Some of the original um, <clears throat> uh, people who put the uh, Historical Society together invited me. So I really believe in, uh, strongly believe in uh, the mission of the archives. And I'm really pleased to be able to be doing this work through a grant uh, and raising funds uh, to do this book, so thank you. Yes, thank you, and thank you everyone for joining us tonight and for supporting Mark's work. Um, I'm going to be sure to get my copy. Hopefully, I'll get it signed um, when it comes out on the 20th, which is inauguration day, which is not a coincidence, I take it, right, Mark? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I started doing this work about two and a half years ago, uh, and I don't have to tell everyone how dark the times have been, um, but it really did inspire me uh, to push at the limits uh, and exploration. But I chose the release date for 1-2021 as a symbol of hope. Great. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And uh, it definitely uh, conveys a lot of hope for me and a lot of different complex ways, which I'm sure we're going to get into over the next 26 minutes. Um, so we have a limited amount of time, and I do want to get into uh, taking a, a peek at the book um, and you know, uh, spending a little bit of time with that. Uh, but there's a lot in there. It's 100 pages. So uh, we're only going to be able to get a little snippet of it. But before we do that, I, I just can you talk a little bit more, Mark, about the inspiration for street sex photos? and how did it begin and how did it take its final form? What was the trajectory there? Uh, I'll be happy to do that, but let me uh, digress for just one moment. I'd Drug like to away. know that uh, I've lived in San Francisco since 1977, and I am really part of the great gay migration uh, during the 1970s to San Francisco. 
And like many gay men, I moved to San Francisco so that I could live a life that was free and open and authentic. And um, doing photography is not something I was really doing before, but has come out of my life in San Francisco. And uh, so I have been actively working as a photographer. I host a uh, gay male figure drawing group that's been meeting for 33 years. So I really believe in gay men, gay sexuality, gay art. Uh, so I just wanted to, to say that to start. Um, uh, many you. artists work from a preconceived idea, uh, but I don't. I seem to sort of fall into things and in this case, it happened to be a young man uh, whose name was Nick, name is Nick, uh, very, uh, very sexy, very beautiful, but he also really believed in uh, sort of the past history of the gay community and the kind of things that men used to do here in San Francisco in the South of Market area during the 70s and 80s, particularly. And, uh, uh, so we went out and uh, I photographed him on the streets and something sort of magical happened. And uh, this is really, you know, sort of my youth when I moved to San Francisco. Um, and like many gay men, um, you know, I, I came to San Francisco uh, so I could be free, uh, but also because of the kind of sex that men in San Francisco had. Uh, let me tell you that the sex in the Midwest uh, was uh, very traditional. Let's just use those terms for it. Um, and uh, so I was really affected when I came out here, very young, very shy, uh, but I was really affected by the gay men out here who were very open, very sexual, and very political. So. One of the things I actually loved about San Francisco and the South of Market scene is that uh, where back in Wisconsin, um, gay men lived very compartmentalized lives. So who they were as gay men was very separate from dealing with their family, very separate from work, very separate, you know, all in kind of little boxes. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I loved about South of Market is that gay men were uh, deconstructing all those boxes. And instead of having separate areas, which said you can only be gay and sexual in this particular part of your life, instead it flooded through every single part of our lives. So um, uh, work, play, friendship, arts, everything. And so that, and that sort of, I'm sorry, go on. And that included having sex in the streets a lot too. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, so when I went out with Nick and started photographing him, uh, of course, I mean, having lived here for so many years, I really feel the sense of the weight of history of the South of Market and how open and freewheeling and sexual it was. And when I photographed him on the streets, I could really feel the, feel that energy, feel those ghosts. So the photo session itself became quite transformative and really struck me and really started me off on a path of exploration. First, f just photographing men on the streets, then photographing men making out, then photographing men having sex on the streets. So in some ways, um, the photo sessions I did were very much the same kind of mindset of the men who went out looking for sex. You never know what you're going to find. You never know what is going to happen. You're filled with all kinds of emotions. Uh, and as I said before, there is a political side to all of this uh, in which every orgasm is a finger in the face of a repressive government. So um, yes, sex was sex, but it was also political freedom at the same time. Right. And I think that's a... Uh really comes across in your book and also in the essays that are included in the book, which are really amazing. But, you know, and I just want to take this pause to, to, to uh, encourage anyone who's watching, if you want to uh, comment in the uh, chat box, you know, we're monitoring that. And uh, Lee Pfeffer, who's our uh, behind the scenes technical person, 
will uh, convey them to us so we can try to respond and maybe have a little bit of conversation here. So feel free to, if you have, want to interject with questions or comments or what have you, uh, we welcome that and it'll be part of the record that we archive as well. So, um, and Mark, you know, I mean, you talk about that 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 moment of inception or creative inception, and uh, this was really like when you were out just taking pictures of your friend, your sexy friend on the street. This was you weren't intending to create a book that was based on taking uh, pictures in the street. Really, I, uh, this is coming out of a uh, thirty years of mostly working in your studio, isn't that right? Well. I What's funny about this book in one way is that I started photographing gay men in the streets of South America in the late 1970s. And uh, in the mid 1980s, I did form uh, a photo studio, uh, got some equipment that was loaned from friends uh, and um, worked, have worked basically for 30 years in the studio just because it was safe, controlled, private, uh, one of the things about photographing on the street, it's exactly the opposite of all those qualities. It's not safe, it's not private, and it's not controlled. Uh, and because I'm photographing on the streets, I want people to know that I did not use any additional lighting or anything artificial. The idea was to try to duplicate, give a sense of what that energy feels like. Uh, one of the things I just want to sort of throw in here that's really important to me is that I recognize how much times have changed. Mm -hmm. uh, so in a sense, the that whole time we're talking about the 70s and 80s was the past. And now with COVID, it's almost like the past of the past. So we're talking about an entire culture, energy, way of life that has sort of disappeared. Uh, and I, as I started working on this project, I really began to feel that I was not only photographing men on the streets, but I was also documenting the architecture and the feel of the streets of South of Market at night. And I wanted to leave some sort of record that would give people a sense of what that energy is like, because it, it, doesn't exist very much anymore. Right. And a, a, a lot of the dress that we have today, you know, in the leather community is, is very similar to what we had in the 70s, but a lot of it is different as well. And, you know, I, I, I know that, you know, a part of what you're doing is this sort of a homage to the past, but you're not trying to recreate the past uh, in these photos. You're, you're, you're not trying to disguise it or, or find a a, a period scene or anything like that. It's it's all about uh, documenting uh, this kind of um, culture, this kind of sexual culture in the present. Isn't that right? Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, and that's exactly it. Some people, when we were doing the shoots, asked, you know, should I dress up like it was the seventies? <laughs> the answer was no, uh, because it wasn't so much about trying to pretend it was the 70s, it's about how do we move forward? Because those times are gone and those times are not gonna come back. Mm -hmm. So the question is not how do we recreate the past? The question is how can we be inspired by the past, inspired by those men, inspired by the lives that they lived and move on to the future? Uh, so much of my work was done during the AIDS epidemic so it's sort of shocking in a way for me to find myself once again in the middle of a pandemic doing sexual erotic work. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, and that might be a really good point for us to sort of jump over to the book because we're about half time already. And uh, we want to take a look at uh, what people are going to be able to purchase. Uh, and we're going to post. Before we, but I would like to show one thing before uh, Lee brings up the book. Okay. Okay. All right. I just just so that uh, what we're going to be looking at is, by the way, uh, I'm doing this uh, print on demand digital uh, through a company called Blurb.com. You may not be familiar with Blurb.com, but I'm mentioning them specifically because they are a San Francisco company, and my work is quite explicit. 
and they have never given me any issues about gay sexuality and leather sexuality. Um, and so uh, I think that's really important. But you're gonna, so you're gonna see a widget that represents the book, but I wanted people, we've been doing test books, so I wanted people to see that here's, here's, here's actually uh, the book. You can see it's 100 pages. And, Eight by uh, 10. So this nice is, size. Yeah. Uh, you know, really, really real. So we can now bring up, uh, bring up the blurb. When your pre your previous book from a few years ago, your retrospective was published on Blurb as well, wasn't it? Yes. Okay, yes. Great. So uh, here we are. Yes, but how do I access this? Lee, unfortunately, this is not responding. I think I have to. We have to do it the other way. Uh, you might have to refresh your screen. Uh, okay, so I think we've lost our guest, apparently. Um, uh, maybe, Lee, you could bring him back up. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to do okay. it this way because I know it works. Okay, go for it. Here we go. So this is actually the back of the book. Uh, you'll see. Sorry about that. It's okay. I really, I really apologize. Hold on. I wanted to share the back of the book. There's a photograph from the book, which is south of Market. And as I mentioned, you can really see the architecture and the feel of what south of Market looks like with the highway and all the buildings. But I love this particular statement by Nick, who is the Nick who's the muse for the book. And I'm just going to read it. There is political power in these photos. Mark and his subjects are reclaiming queer space they are upsetting heteronormativity and revolting against so-called standards of propriety. Right. So that sort of fits, uh, fits my energy. Okay, so we're going to go all the way to the front, and I'm just going to share a little bit of the book, so just about uh, 10 pages, just to give you a little sense of what the book is about. Oh, so and before you do that, I just, I, I just want to interrupt briefly and just say for – uh, because we are live streaming on social media, I just want to like alert anybody that's under 18 or has any sort of uh, 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 uncomfortableness around sexually explicit images to please go ahead and change the channel. Okay, proceed. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is the uh, lead photograph. Um, Uh, and this is another gentleman photographed out on the streets. Uh, and you can see additional text here by Nick Wayfell uh, and uh, uh, Alyssa Swindell, Alisa Swindell. Um, and, and Mark, can you talk a little bit about how, how the uh, scenes are set for the photos? Uh, uh, well, let's 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 just look at this briefly, and then uh, I we'll think that that. Will, then we can talk more about that. Okay. So this is actually a photograph of Nick from the very first photo session, um, and which is what sort of kicked everything off. Uh, and there's a full range of behavior in the book, so it's not just pictures of actual sex, but you notice that these individuals are cruising. Um, on this one, I absolutely love his red hat, the red door, the tree, and yet here they are. You may not be able to tell exactly what they're doing, but you can see that it's a very intense personal interaction. 
The next thing, and this is where uh, Terry was talking about things getting a little more explicit, I was interested in seeing if I could actually photograph sex scenes out on the street. And so that's what you're looking at now, which is a motorcycle scene, uh, three guys. Uh, I love the look of the south of market here, the highway, um, and something more explicit here. And one of the things I wanna say is, as I mentioned, I'm not using any additional lighting. This is lighting just on the street. And in this photograph of the three guys in the bike, there's a lot of detail that you cannot see, but excuse me, but what's so great uh, is that what you can see really fills in all the blanks. And I just love this passionate moment between these three men. And then I'm, hold on, I'm just, I'm gonna skip through some things because I want to show a particular image. Okay. So, and I wanna tell just a very brief little story. So this is a photograph of Richard. One of the things in this is that I didn't think up scenes for people to do, I tried to tap into the personal interests of the people who I was photographing. Great. So this guy was into being kidnapped. So Great. we're actually on, this is actually the end of Door Alley Street down around 9th. Uh, and uh, this area here was a, a parking lot for big trucks. Uh, we saw a big truck pull in. We quickly closed the uh, trunk, sat on the trunk, uh, and about 15 minutes later, the guy in the truck came out with his own personal truck. And as he drove by, uh, the window was down. He waved at us and said, have fun, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know what you're going to find on the streets. Uh, well, right. that, that picture definitely tells a story. <laughs> yes, very much so. So I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, I thought I stopped sharing. I think you did, yeah. Yes, there we go. All right, so I'm now back with you. I see that the time is really going fast. Uh, so um, yeah. if anybody had any questions or comments, uh, they might throw that in. Okay, Lee's going to throw some into the chat there, and while they're working on that, um, I just I had one. So I read in your essay that you posted – about your work in progress as you were doing it on Facebook uh, 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 from the from the beginning, and I found that really interesting. But last week, uh, you posted on your Facebook timeline that uh, a quote from Carl Jung uh, that you had recorded in your journal 30 years ago, where uh, uh, Jung says, "The images that you make public become your own mythology and part of the destiny of all men." And I. I thought that it was a great quote, and I just wondered if you could expand on that. Um, I, I mentioned it. You know, this was something that I found in, you know, going back through some old Facebook posts um, and something that had come from my journal that I copied down because especially during the early years when I wasn't really sure what it was I was doing, you know, I was just going on faith, on intuition. And that quote really meant a lot to me. And I realized that as I did this work over a period of years, that uh, those images then become my mythology that other people will use. Um, and, and on that topic, actually, I want to, I want to digress for just one moment. Um, you know, so many men in the leather community have been inspired by the work of Tom of Finland and has had a tremendous amount of effect on the community, the clothes we wear, the energy. But one of the things about Tom's work, even though later in life he did more diverse work, is that it's very homogeneous in terms of age, body type, uh, race. And one of the things that I love about this work is that it's so diverse. These are not people who look like, this is not like a lot of modern gay photography in which 
It's uh, rip model after rip model after rip model after rip model. These are real people. These are authentic people uh, who normally are not seen as sexual icons. Um, and that diversity of age, race, body type was really important to me uh, as someone who myself is outside of those standards of what is sort of hot, hot gay sexuality. So uh, I just wanted to uh, throw that in and uh, make sure that people know that for me, uh, being diverse like that uh, and being authentic were really important aspects. Right, yeah, thank you very much. That's a really a beautiful um, aesthetic for this kind of work because you know, so often what we see are the glamorized and you know, airbrushed uh, photos of you know, sexual representation of that none of us can live up to, and uh, and, <laughs> really? uh, and uh, you know, and, and and yet we're all very sexual, or many of us are, um, and uh, and uh, it's important for us to like have those identities represented. So uh, we have one question coming up here. I think let's see. Uh, have you incorporated trans men in your work? I have, but. Um, unlike other photographers who have uh, really focused on that, um, you can't tell by looking at the photographs because that's not the main focus. Right. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, but, we but are, we I, I actually a... wanted to. I actually wanted to respond to a comment made by Eric, yeah. um, who asked. I, I thought this was great. Great artist, photographer, love his work. As a photographer myself who works with queer folks, I love studio work at first. I could control everything. With COVID-19, I've taken to the streets, documenting queer folks where they are, and I love it. Any advice for natural light photography? Um, my advice is one, to use a camera that, that has a high ISO. Sometimes I was shooting at uh, 250,000 ISO, which for an old black and white photographer is unknown. Um, the other thing is you just have to explore. In other words, we had to go look for light on the streets. But I also wanted to say something about your comment about, you say I've taken to the streets because of COVID-19. And it's one of the things that has really made me think as people have talked about maybe the place for gay sex now is back on the streets because we're out in the open and it's probably safer than being in a little closed studio. So I just wanted to say to Eric that uh, congratulations and keep doing work and uh, I'll look forward to seeing what you're doing. That's amazing, that's great. Um, Mark, we're just about out of time and I do wanna mention that um, uh, in the chat, we have posted ways that our viewers can get in touch with you, um, especially as the book comes out. Uh, send Mark an email and he can put you in touch uh, or a text um, and it's posted there uh to uh to get a copy of the book i'm really excited to get one myself um and uh this is a very short format we didn't get to a lot we could talk for a lot longer um the event on it's actually march 19th um is, is, going it, to is be, it thursday uh i think it's a friday actually is it, you know uh, oh but, i have the wrong date okay okay <laughs> in any case you know i think it's going to be kind of a party and i, I hope it's kind of like a, a we there was never an opportunity to have a birthday party for you also turning 70 mark which is wonderful and uh, uh so and i hope that uh it can be a celebration of the book um and uh we're, we're very excited about putting that together with you um and i want to thank also the um uh, the south market leather and lgbtq cultural district for co-hosting tonight's event and helping to promote it um we're going to be posting this on our website uh, and uh, on uh, YouTube and so on. And so people can check it out and share it uh, as we go forward. And next month, uh, we're gonna be having a friend of mine who's a performance artist, uh, Josier Grego Sykes, uh, who's written a number of performance pieces that I'm uh, really excited to talk about with him. And that is on uh, February 11th, Thursday, uh, for the Queer Culture Club's second edition. So with that, Mark, uh, we're gonna have to wrap up. 
thank you so much uh, for touching on all the major themes. I think I hope that we got out in, in talking about your very wonderful, beautiful uh, work. And uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, wear a mask, stay safe, and uh, see you on the other side. Thanks, Terry. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night.